Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. My name is Nakad Saman. We are going through Muhtasar Al Quduri. Now, if you guys are not familiar with my channel, check out my channel. Subscribe, hit the like button, um, and uh, yeah, watch this video. So, we've reached the chapter of Sujood As Sahu. So, Sujood As Sahu is uh, going to be covered in two lessons, inshallah. Ta'ala. This is the today's lesson, and then the next lesson will be the second part. So, Sujood As Sahu. He says, Sujood means prostration, Sajda. And Sahu means mistake. Right, so, Sahu is mistake. Uh, let me write that a bit more clear. All right, it's becoming more and more terrible. All right, so Sahu is mistake. So, Sujood as Sahu, Wajib, you guys should know what that means. Yeah, that means addition, adding. Nuqsan means subtracting or missing, deficient. Uh, salam, you guys know that. Sajdatain is two prostrations. But I want you to tell me uh, why this word is Sajdatain and what was it originally? So it means two prostrations, but what was it originally? Okay. Um, yalzamuhu, lazima yalzamu. Right, it means to become necessary. Lazima yalzamu. Sujood asaw fi'lan. You guys should know what that means. Jints means kind or type. Kind of something or type of something. Um, okay, fi'lan. Taraka, yatruku, to abandon, to leave. Masnoon means something that's established from the sunnah. And it can also mean something that's established from the reports. Yeah, so sunnah reports. Fatiha, Qiraat al-Fatiha, you guys know what Fatiha means. Qunut is actually a specific type of dua which we're going to cover in the chapter of Witr. Uh, dua Qunut. Tashahud. Uh, okay. Takbirat al-Eidain. Jahar al-Imam. Jahar yajharu. It means to be allowed. Um, and Khafata yukhafitu mukhafatatan. It means to be quiet, the opposite. Okay. That's done. So quiet. Khafata yukhafitu, and this is yujharu. Yujharu. Wa sahu al imami yujibu al mu'tam mu'tam. This is something that's come up many, many times. It means the follower, the one that prays behind the imam. And uh, again, mu'tams come again. Alright. Uh, saha yashu. This is actually saha yashu to make a mistake. This is the verb. Man saha al qa'da. Qa'da means the sitting. Sitting. Qa'da. Hal Qu'ud Akrab. Okay, posture. Posture. Lam Ya'ud is from Ada Ya'udu. It means to return. Ada Ya'udu. Lam Ya'ud. Ada Ya'udu. Okay, there you have it. Right, next. Whenever we start title, you always remember that this Hadha is hidden over there. So Hadha is going to become the Mubtada. Then you have Sujood Sahu. Sajada Yasjudu. Sujood. Uh, which becomes the khabar. Um, okay, and then you have sujood or sahwi mubtada. Wajibun is the khabar. Fiziyadati wa nuqsani. Ba'da is dharf salami. Mudaf ilayhi. Yasjudu sajdataini. Thumma yatashahadu. Wa yusallimu sallama yusallimu taslim. Wa yalzamu. Wa yalzumu. Wa yalzumu. And this is wa yalzumu. It's actually supposed to be yalzamuhu. Maybe the dhamma has been slightly shifted in the wrong place. يلزم يلزمه لازم يلزم إذا فعل سجود السهوي إذا فاعل إذا زاد في صلاته فعلا فعلا إذا مفعول به من جنسها ليس من جنسها ليس منها ليس means not so ليس you know ليس ليس is فعل ناقص نو لا ترك فعلا مسنونا فعلا is موصوف مسنونا is the صفة because مفعول به أو ترك and then you got all these words over here. Ataf, mansub, ataf, onto qira'ah. Taraka qira'at al-fatiha, taraka al-qunud, taraka tashahud. Now I want to ask you this question over here. Why is it takbirati? Shouldn't it be takbirata? Mm. Test question for you guys. Al-eidain is mudaf ilayhi. Aw jahara al-imam fi'al. Al-imam fa'il. Khafata yukhafitu. Jahar al-imam fi ma yukhafit. Imam does jahar in that which he is quiet. أو خافة فيما يجهر خافة يخافة فيما يجهر. Now this, 
You see, you can make this into Jahl Imam Fima Yukhafat. The Imam is reads aloud in that which is supposed to be silence. Majhul. Yeah. Fima you can have that. And then Khafata Fima Yujhar. And then he's silent in that in which there's supposed to be loud recitation. Okay, so there's various ways you can say that. Wasahul Imami Mubtada Muyujibu. All this is the fi'al file. Khabar as sujood muful bihi. So Jafala fi'al file. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْجُدْ الْإِمَامُ فِي الْفَاعِلِ يَسْجُدْ is جَزَمْ مَجْزُوم المؤتم is فَاعِل of فِعْل فَإِنْ سَهَ المؤتم فِي الْفَاعِل لَمْ يَلْزَمْ الْإِمَامَ وَالْمُؤْتَمَ So يَلْزَمْ the فَاعِل of يَلْزَمْ is this word سُجُود that comes at the end Right, so إمام المؤتم is مفعول به سُجُود is actually the فَاعِل So here is Just write it down فَاعِل Fail, fail. Woman saha an qada til ula, whoever misses the qada to ula, thumma tadakara, wa huwa ila hali al quudi akrab akrab. You guys should know why this is a single dhamma. You guys should know. If you don't, or if you do, put in the comments. Al fajalasa wa tashahada in kana ila hali al qiyam akrabu. Again, the same with akrabu over here. Lam yaud. في الفاعل ويسجد للسهو. Okay, that's the تركيب. Right now, let's look at the مسائل. What's up? Now this, what I'm drawing here is basically a description of the ركعات. Right, so two ركعات over here. These two ركعات are going to make up four. So two, and then we're going to have two more, and that's going to make up four basically. So that's the guy standing, the guy doing ركوع, سجدة, and then he stands again, does ركوع, does سجود. And then sits down. So this is the the first two rakats, yeah. And then again, if I copy this and I make another one, it becomes four, right? So the reason I'm showing you this is, is because I want to show you what it actually means to make a mistake in salat, and to add to salat and to subtract from salat. Yeah. So you got two rakats at the top and two rakats at the bottom. So you got four all together. Now, um. If a person makes a mistake in the salat, there's actually three situations. Yeah, three situations. Number one is that his salat will become void and he has to restart his salat again. So someone made a major mistake in the salat, salat has to be void. This happens when a person misses out a fard act or commits an act in salat which is totally contra contrary to salat. Yeah, misses out a fard or commits an act which is totally contrary to salat. Number two is if a person makes a minor mistake, small little mistake in salat, it won't. It's fine. It won't really affect the validity of the salat. And then you got the one where we're talking about, which requires sajda sahu to rectify it. So it sajda sahu actually is like the plaster, right? When you injure yourself, when you put plaster on, it rectifies the mistake that you made, the injury that you made to the salat. So he says sujood sahu is wajib. The sajda sahu is considered, according to the Hanafis, to be necessary. Yeah, it's considered to be necessary. Now, when is this fi ziyadati wa nuqsan? In ziyada and nuqsan. Ziyada means adding something to the salat. And nuqsan means taking away something from salat. Yeah, so additions and subtractions. Now, what does that mean? What can you add to the salat? What, what? Does that mean you can't add anything to the salat? You know, you can't like recite for a longer period. What, what does it exactly mean? Or subtracting, if someone misses out a tasbih, subhanallah, or something. So, not everything. So, for example, like a person, you know, adds into their salat, at-tahiyya, tashahud, when they're reading Fatiha, instead of Fatiha, they read tashahud. Or, for example, like a person, he um, uh, he or she, they, um, you know, add an extra ruku, an extra ruku they add. Or, let's say, for example, like someone uh, subtracts from their salat, the sitting, so after the two rakats, let's say they're praying four rakats of salat. After the two rakats, the sitting that they're supposed to do, they miss this out. Right? So these are situations where a person would have to say the sahu. Now, how do you exactly do such the sahu? So let me try to illustrate it for you guys, just so that you guys can have a better understanding of how the sajda sahu is performed. So the sajda sahu is actually performed at this point, right? As soon as you get to salam. Right, you give one salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. You give one salam, 
and then you do the procedure for Sajda Sahu. So let me just move this out of the way. Okay, that's the exact point that you start Sajda Salam, Sajda Sahu. Right, just as soon as you give one salam, then you do the Sajda Sahu. Okay, so he says, بعد السلام يسجد سجدتين So Sajda Sahu is wajib. After Salam, after completing the Salat, and you only give one Salam, ثم يتشهد and then you do tashahud and then you give salam again. Yeah, so what does that mean? So if I move this out of the way. Okay. Now over here, look, after you give one salam, what you do is you do two sajdas. Yeah, two sajdas. And then you do tashahud. Right? You do at tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawat, all of that. And then Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, all of that. And then you do your dua. And then you give the salam. Right at the end, you give salam. <coughs> <coughs> Salam is given And that's it So that extra addition Extra sort of extension That you add on to your salat That is what Sajda Sahu is You give one salam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Two sajdas Allahu Akbar Subhanahu rabbi ala Subhanahu rabbi ala Subhanahu rabbi ala Allahu Akbar Again And then At-tahiyyatu lillahi wa salawati wa tayyibat Read all of it And then finish And Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah That's how you do it basically Alright Um so all of this is the extension, the sajda sahu that's added onto the end. Um, then he says, وَيَلْزَمُهُ سُجُودُ السَّحُوِ Sujud as sahu is necessary upon him. إِذَا زَادَ When he adds فِي salatihi In his salat فِعْلًا An action مِنْ جِنْسِهَا Which is from the genus of salat. Why is he saying that for? Because if you do an action which is not from salat, not from the kind of actions that you normally find in salat, then the salat will become void. So let's say you ate in salat, you put food in your mouth and ate it, or you drank in salat, or you start talking to someone in salat. These are not actions of salat. So if you add any of these in salat, your salat will become nullified. So what kind of things are from the genus of salat? Like standing, doing ruku, sujood, tashahud, uh, reading Quran, doing dhikr of Allah. All of these are considered from the genus of salat. So. He says, if, when a person adds to the Salat something which is part of Salat, but it's not that location, laysa minha, but it's not, that's not the place you're supposed to do it. Now, this does not apply to everything. It only applies to the, uh, the delaying of what we call delaying of the Fard or the Wajib actions. Yeah. So, for example, like a person recited Surah Fatiha twice. Now, if you recite Surah Fatiha twice, you're going to delay the Surah because, let's say, for example, I'm reading Surah Fatiha and then Qulhu Allahu Ahad. So I'm supposed to read Fatiha, then Qulhu Allahu Ahad. Now if I add between them another Fatiha, so I read Fatiha, then I read Fatiha again, and then I read Qulhu Allahu Ahad. What I've done is I've added something in between these two and I've delayed. So Fatiha is from Salat, but by adding it, it's necessitated Sajda Sahu. Now you do not have to do Sajda Sahu if you add any Tasbihat, okay? Any Tasbihat, um, like that, or you stretch the, the reading of the Quran, you do not have to do any. So, for example, if I'm praying and I say, Subhanallah, or Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa, I don't have to do any sajda sahu for, for, for this uh, like addition. Okay. Um, so, Zada fi salat, that's the first one. Or taraka fi'lan masnoonan, or if a person actually leaves out a, a, a masnoon action. What he means by masnoon action here is a wajib action that's been established through the sunnah, a wajib action that's been established through your sunnah. kitab, uh, or if a person was to uh, leave recitation of Fatiha, or left the the du'a qunut in witr, or did not do the tashahud in the first sitting, or takbirat al then missed out the extra takbirs that are going to come in Eid. We're going to talk about that when we reach that chapter. Oh, Jahar al-Imam, or the Imam recites aloud in those prayers that he's supposed to recite quietly. Uh, or the Imam recites quietly in those prayers that he's supposed to recite aloud. Okay, now some of these things have come before and some of these things are going to come later on in Quduri, so I wouldn't really uh, worry too much about that. But all you have to remember here is these are examples of scenarios where you have to do Sajda Sahu but if you miss them out. Okay, so how does this work then? Right, so like we said, this is only the mistakes adding and subtracting from Salat is only those things that he's listed over here. Zada fi salati fi'lan masnoonan. He's add something extra to his salat. Um, or like we said, uh, the person has you know done 
then then these things you know tarak al kira fatiha etc now adding things to salat or missing things out so when we say adding we mean adding something to salat which is part of salat like we said if it's not considered to be part of salat uh then you are not if uh, if you add something which is not part of salat then you cannot continue salat your salat it needs repeating if you miss something out in salat if you miss out a fard in salat your salat is nullified you have to repeat it again but if you miss out a wajib then that's when you do sajda sahu so when it comes to missing it's only the missing of wajibs and when it comes to adding this is how to remember it when it comes to adding it's only adding something which is part of salat which makes you delay a fard or a wajib yeah delaying of the fard or the wajib okay usually sajda sahu is like confusing for a lot of students so he says إِذَا زَادَ فِي صَلَاتِهِ A person adds in their salat فِعْلًا an action which is from this genus and لَيْسَ مِنْهَا but it's not from there meaning it's not in that position أو تَرَكَ أو a person leaves an action which is considered to be established from the sunnah now this does not mean sunnah mu'akkada if a person misses out any sunnah mu'akkada from salat they do not have to do سَجَدَ سَهُ أو تَرَكَ كِرَاءَةَ فَاتِحَ the kitab person leaves out reading fatiha أو كُنُوت دُعَا كُنُوت أو تَشَهُد Right, we're talking about the first sitting. Or oh, misses out the takbirat al-Eid. Hanafis have six extra takbirs in Eid you recite. Three in the first rakat, three in the second rakat, which we're going to cover. O oh, jahara, or a person recites aloud in, in that which he's supposed to recite quietly. So which salats, so that's the first sitting, okay. That's the first sitting. So which salats does a person have to recite uh, quietly in? Right, there's only two, asr and dhuhr. Dhuhr and asr. These are two salats which you are supposed to recite quietly in. O khafata fima yujhar or a person recites aloud in that which he's supposed to quietly in that which he's supposed to recite aloud. So that's Maghrib Isha and Fajr. Okay. Wasahul Ima now this does that does not apply to a person praying on their own. Okay. So if a person prays on their own and they missed out uh, the reading aloud and quietly and got that confused. There's no such sahu at all. Sahul Imami. Now this is another Muslim. Let's say for instance there's an Imam and he's leading some people. And this Imam he makes a mistake which necessitates Sajda Sahu. So the followers didn't make the mistake, but because the followers are following the Imam, the followers will have to do Sajda Sahu as well. So he's done a mistake, and uh, his mistake basically is uh, a Sajda Sahu mistake. So therefore, even though they didn't do it, but because they're following him, they have to follow his actions as well. Now let's say for example like he forgot, he made a mistake but he forgot to do Sajda Sahu at the end but the people remembered. Should the followers do Sajda Sahu? No. Because if they do Sajda Sahu and he hasn't, they're going against his Salat. Okay, so Sahu al-Imami, the mistake of an Imam necessitates al-Mu'tam upon the follower sujood, performing the Sajda of Sahu. فَإِن لَمْ يَسْجُدَ الْإِمَامِ If the Imam does not do Sajda, لَمْ يَسْجُدَ الْمُؤْتَمْ Then the followers will not do Sajda. Now, question is, what if the follower makes a mistake? If the follower makes a mistake, as long as he has not missed out a fard, his salat is done. Any mistake he makes, even if it's a sajda sahu mistake, as long as he's behind the imam and hasn't missed out a fard action, so the six fard actions, as long as he hasn't missed out one of the six fard actions, then his salat is considered to be fine. The imam and him do not have to do sajda sahu. This is only for the follower, not for the person praying on their own. So in Saha uh, al Mu'tam, if the follower was to do Sajda Sahu, yeah, um, then there's no, there's no, Lam Yalzam al Imam, it's not necessary on the Imam nor on the follower Mu'tam as Sujood to do Sajda. Okay, last Masla now. Let's say this happens quite a lot, I mean, it happens to me as well now and again. Let's say you're praying four rakats and the first sitting, so you pray two rakats, you're supposed to sit down and you forgot to sit down, right? So there's two scenarios that can come out of this. You forgot to sit down. If you forgot to sit down and stood up straight away, then you have to do Sajda Sahu. But what if you're half and half, you're in between? So then you look at what are you more closest towards? Are you more closest towards the ground or are you more closest towards standing? If you're more closest towards the ground, sit back down and no Sajda Sahu. But if you're closer to standing, then you have to do Sajda Sahu. You have to carry on standing, don't sit down. Yeah, so for example, this guy he seems to be more close to the ground. 
And this guy over here, however, he seems to be more closer towards standing. He looks more closer to standing. So the guy who's closer to standing is in the ruling of standing. So therefore, he missed out his sajda, his sitting. So he's got to do sajda. And the other guy, he's closer to sitting. So this is why he all he has to do is sit back down and, and he's done. So look at this now. He says, وَمَنْ سَحَا عَنِ الْقَعْدَةِ الْأُولَى Last two lines. Whoever um, makes a mistake, missing out the first sitting. ثُمَّ تَذَكَّرَ And then he realized, وَهُوَ إِلَى حَالِ الْقُعُودِ أَقْرَبِ Whilst he is closer to the posture of uh, of uh, sitting, عَادَ He returns. فَجَلَسَ وَتَشَهَدَ And he sits and he does the shahud. وَإِنْ كَانَ إِلَى حَالِ الْقِيَامِ But if he's closer to standing, then أَقْرَبْ uh, لَمْ يَعُدْ He shouldn't sit back down. He shouldn't return. Yes to the sahu, and then at the end of his salat, he does say the sahu. Okay, alhamdulillah, that's what we covered today. I hope you guys have benefited from this lesson. Um, now, one thing to remember is say the sahu. If you done your salat, but you didn't do say the sahu, you made a mistake, no say the sahu, then you will be considered to have committed an offense, right? But your salat would have been done, right? Now, ideally, you should repeat your salat again. Um, but if you can't, then your salat is considered to be done. But you'll be considered to be, uh, you know, possibly sinful for that. So Jazakallah Khair. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, thank you very much, guys, for your all your support. Patrons, you guys are wonderful people. If any of you guys want to become patron and you want to support my channel, the work that I do on a monthly basis, check out the description below. Any any anything that you 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 donate to this channel is going to become sadaqa jariya for for me and for you. Um, <coughs> and also the free content that I provide for all the people. Anyone who watches it, you're going to get a share of that reward as well. Jazakumullah uh, khair. Take care, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.